everyone. My name is Cass, and welcome to our Reefs Go Live broadcast live from Little Cayman. I'm the Marine Education Intern at CCMI, and today we are joined by a class from the Cayman International School at CCMI, Georgetown Primary School in Grand Cayman, and Mount St. Agnes Academy in Bermuda. We also have a very special guest joining us today, His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales. Thank you all for joining us, and I'm looking forward to an awesome broadcast with you guys today. Our underwater educator, Katie, will be leading our live dive today, and we're going to talk about coral reefs. So, Katie, why don't you start us off by explaining exactly what a coral reef is? Sure. Hello, everyone, and as Cass said, my name is Katie, and I am going to be your underwater educator today on a live dive right here off of Little Cayman to talk about why these coral reefs are so important to keep healthy for many years to come. So, as Cass said, let's get started with what is a coral reef exactly? Well, it is thousands and thousands of years of stony or hermitipid coral growth, corals growing one on top of the other over long periods of time, creating these massive structures that you see here in front of me. And this structure provides home for an entire ecosystem. This is a very healthy colony of Elkhorn coral, also known as Acropor palmata, and actually it's a critically endangered species. It's one of seven what we call edge species, evolutionarily distinct and globally endangered stony coral species that we have here in the Caribbean. It's a crucial part of this reef system because as you guys can see, it's almost like reaching its arms up and trying to grab as much of that sunlight as it can, but it's also providing a perfect home for so many little fishes. We had some trumpet fish on it earlier. There's a juvenile yellowtail damselfish in here that's kind of black with these electric blue spots. And it's providing both a home for these fish and protection from other predators as well. Wow, that's pretty interesting that such a like coral like that can provide so much protection and help for these reefs and fishes that live on it. Yeah, especially the elkhorn coral. This genus used to provide all Caribbean reefs with about 90% of their structure. But over time, this coral has slowly been lost due to some of those threats that we spoke about earlier. Oh. So we talked about a few fish. You said you had a school of barjacks down there with you. That's pretty cool. <laughs> we did. Have you seen any herbivores down there yet, Katie? We do. Actually, there's quite a few herbivores down here today. Uh, just here in front of me, we've got a little school of Bermuda chub. These grayish, silvery fish that are shaped kind of like a football. These guys are what one of our researchers, Dr. Claire Dell, has recently discovered is a key herbivore on Cayman coral reefs. So these guys are one of the more responsible parties for eating and getting rid of a lot of the macroalgae or that fuzzy stuff that you're seeing on the reef. They're able to eat a lot of that at one time. So they're a, a key player in keeping our coral reefs healthy. Huh. Um how can you tell the difference between a healthy and unhealthy coral reef? Oh, that's a great question. Well, first and foremost, a healthy reef has nice structure to it, just like this one does. Lots of branching corals, lots of mounding corals, and big relief from the bottom to the top. Also, lots of coral cover, low macroalgae cover. We can see here that we do have some healthy competition on the reef, where there is a lot of this macroalgae kind of growing next to and among this stony coral. However, we also have another keystone herbivore species here. We've got a long-spined sea urchin, which is another crucial part of a healthy reef, is having these keystone species without which could actually lead to ecosystem collapse. Okay, so we have talked so much about our reefs today. We've talked about what a coral reef is, 
um, what we can do to keep them healthy, some of the threats they're facing, and why they're so important. And Katie, we actually have a question. Excellent. And they, some students would love to know, how do these corals eat to stay so healthy? How do these corals what to stay so healthy? Eat. How do they get all their nutrients and energy? Oh, that's a great question, you guys. Well, a couple different ways. The first way they do is that you can see if all these corals around me have many different colors, and that color has to do with how much zooxanthellae they have in their skeletal structure and in their polyps. So a coral that has a really rich color means that it probably has a lot of zooxanthellae. Now that zooxanthellae is taking in that sunlight and converting it to their energy or the food they need through photosynthesis. But if they're not getting enough of that energy through photosynthesis, then they are able to actually reach out with their tentacles and grab free-flowing food that might be going by them, like zooplankton or phytoplankton. So this soft coral, we can see they have their pops all out, and they're able to actually capture any food that might be floating by. So two different ways that they're getting their food. That's pretty interesting. And what about some of the other coral species you're seeing down there right now? Anything other than the elkhorn? I'm sorry, what was that about the elkhorn? Uh, are there any other coral species that you're seeing down there, types of different corals? Oh gosh, yeah, there's a ton. <laughs> um, right now we're on a little piece of mountainous star coral, or Orbicella fabulata. It's a, a coral that you can see has lots of little holes in it, and each of these holes is called a coralite cup. And it's actually a structure of the coral that is made out of calcium carbonate or aragonite, which is similar to our own human skeleton. And then they also have those zooxanthellae in them, and that's what gives it this greenish purple color to it, instead of looking maybe kind of goldish brown like the elkhorn coral. We've also got some lettuce coral down here, which is an agaricea or an undaria genus. And we've also got tons of other soft corals, like this sea fan that is just next to the camera as well. So there's a large biodiversity of both stony corals, soft corals, and fishes out here on the reef. So we actually have another question, Katie. Sweet! Uh, about the corals. Uh -huh. and a student from Bermuda is asking, what, uh, the corals look too colorful down there, but do they have color and why can't we see them if they're so healthy? Ah, that's a great question coming in from Bermuda. And it probably has something to do with what we call light attenuation. As the sunlight comes into the water column, you do lose some colors throughout the rainbow and the color spectrum as you increase with depth. So, when I'm looking at, say, this purple sea fan, to me, right here, it looks very purple. But to you guys, through this camera, and because of the depth that we're at, the artificial light does help to bring back some of that color, but it may actually appear a bit dull or just losing a little bit of that richness in color to you guys. But it's still a very healthy coral that has lots of that zooxanthellae in it. That's a great question. <laughs> that is a really great question. And Katie, we actually had another question. Uh, right. saying, do the coral reefs really need to be saved? Because the reef you're on right now looks pretty healthy. Wow, <laughs> that is an excellent question. Do these reefs really need to be saved? 110%. This reef, thankfully, is pretty healthy, but believe it or not, all of you students that live here in the Cayman Islands and in Bermuda, we're pretty lucky because our reefs are about 17 to 21 percent stony coral cover or hermatypic coral cover, which is among the highest in the Caribbean. However, that used to be 22 to 24 percent coral cover. And even though they're beautiful, in order to make sure they're around for the future, 
and for your kids and your grandkids to enjoy, we need to each do our part to make sure that we're preserving them and helping to minimize all of our negative impacts that could be hurting them. Otherwise, they may not be around in the future. So we can save the coral reefs, right, if we all work together. We absolutely can, and it's really up to all of us. If we want to make sure these reefs stay looking like this, we all need to do our part, but we have to act now. So that's why we need you students to learn lessons like this, see reefs like this, and help us to spread the word. And this is such a great opportunity for everyone here getting to watch this broadcast to learn hands-on and live what's going on with these coral reefs and what we can do to help keep them healthy. Absolutely. We're getting a really cool shot of a little trumpet fish here. Ooh. We see he's doing a found a home underneath this palmata. Really beautiful golden yellow one, which is pretty sweet. That looks awesome, Katie. <laughs> So another question just came in asking, are the lionfish invasive in the Cayman Islands and Caribbean, and what can we do about them if they are? Ooh, great question. The lionfish are invasive, which means that it's not from here. The lionfish, if I saw one, I would show you, but thankfully we haven't seen any on this reef or throughout this dive, so that's good. But they're invasive, which means they're not originally from the Caribbean or the Atlantic. They're actually from the Indo-Pacific oceans on the other side of the world. And they've come over into the Caribbean and the Atlantic through a number of ways. But they don't belong here. Lionfish are eating so many different kinds of fish on the reef and crustaceans as well. They're able to grow super quick and they reproduce very quickly and they live in so many different environments in the ocean. Shallow, deep, really salty water or almost brackish water where it's kind of a mix between fresh and salt water. So there's exploded in their population. But what each of us can do is we can eradicate them by going out and getting a permit to call those lionfish either through spearing with a Hawaiian sling or netting them as well off the reef. Or if you're not a diver or a snorkeler and able to do that, simply you can demand or ask a restaurant in your local area to sell them. So by promoting eating lionfish, we're going to get rid of them off the reef so much faster. Wow, that's pretty interesting that we have a huge part to play in not only helping the coral reefs, but also controlling these species in the Cayman Islands and Caribbean that are invasive. And they taste delicious. They <laughs> do taste delicious. I love lionfish. Me too. So, Katie, I think we're almost at the end of this broadcast. Do you have anything to say to our dive buddies? I mean, you dive buddies have had some amazing questions. <laughs> And I really do want to thank you for coming out here onto this reef, Grundy's of Little Cayman. And thank you for joining us and taking part in interacting with all of your great questions about our coral reef health. And I have to say, that question of do the coral reefs need saving is so important and so special because these reefs do need saving. Without these reefs, in a number of years, we wouldn't be here. We need this beautiful ecosystem, and we can save them if we all work together now. So think of everything you've learned today on this dive and talk to people about it. Help us spread the message of these beautiful ecosystems and what each of us can do to help them in the future. Otherwise, I hope that you'll join us on the next Reef School Live, which is April 11th, and be my dive buddies again. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Katie. We'll see you topside in a bit. All right. See you in a little bit, Cass. And for me up here, i just like to say that all of you have been some amazing dive buddies. And I know you all have loads of questions. And if you have any more, type them in the YouTube chat box, and we will get a video of Katie answering them topside and release that on our social media very soon. So from up here, just remember we can all help save the coral reefs if we act now and work together. Hope to see you guys on a dive again soon.